Uh, Dr. Fauci, it's always good to see you. Uh, I want to ask you about the latest development, the CDC now urging, quote, residents of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut to refrain from non-essential domestic travel for 14 days effective immediately. This came after President Trump considered an enforceable quarantine, as he put it, for those states. Um, so why did uh, the administration go with this travel advisory instead? And will this help stop the virus? Well, I, I think it ultimately will help stop the virus, Jake. We had a very intensive discussions last night at the White House with the president. As you know, the, the original proposal was to consider seriously an enforceable quarantine. After discussions with the president, we made it clear and he agreed that it would be much better to do what's called a strong advisory. And the reason for that is that you don't want to get to the point where you're being enforcing things that would create a, a, a big of difficulty, morale and otherwise, when you could probably accomplish the same goal. One of the issues is that the infection rate in New York City and the New York City area is about 56% of all of the new infections in the country are coming from that area. That's terrible mm -hmm. suffering from the people of New York, which I feel myself personally as a New Yorker. So what was trying to be done is to get people, unless there's necessary travel, so all non-essential travel, to just hold off because what you don't want is people traveling from that area to other areas of the country and inadvertently and innocently infecting other individuals. We felt the better part of way to do this would be a advisory as opposed to a very strict quarantine. And the president agreed. And that's why he made that determination last night. And I believe he tweeted it out last night. So, um, Dr. Fauci, the U.S. now has the most officially reported coronavirus cases on the entire globe. Of course, that requires that you believe all the other countries reporting, including China. But let's just for now assume that the U.S. Uh, numbers are, are the, the largest. Do, do you believe that the U.S. is now the epicenter of this outbreak? Well, you know, certainly, uh, I mean, it, it, the semantics, Jake, what you want to call it, but it certainly is the focus of what's going on right now. We have a very difficult problem here. We have areas of the country, such as the New York area. We're going to be seeing places like Detroit and other cities starting to get into trouble where the curve did what exactly I said on this show and other shows some time ago. It putters yeah. along a while and then it just goes way up. And when it does that, you're really in full mitigation. It's very difficult to do containment. So we want to strongly do mitigation in those areas like New York City and the surrounding metropolitan area at the same time that we don't neglect other areas of the country where it looks like there are just relatively few infections because we have a window of opportunity there, as, as, as the Speaker Pelosi said, to get out there and test. And if we do testing, identification, isolation, getting people out of circulation who are infected and contact tracing, we might be able to prevent those areas from getting to that stage where we'd have to do mitigation, which is much more difficult and much more frustrating than trying to contain. Well, Dr. Burke said yesterday, as you know, that she doesn't think any city will be spared from this <clears throat> virus. Um, how many cases do you think the U.S. will reach? A million cases, two, 10 million cases, or, or, are these, we, or do we not even have any idea? You know, Jake, the honest, to be honest with you, we don't really have any firm idea. There are things called models. And when someone creates a model, they put in various assumptions. And the model is only as good and as accurate as your assumptions. And whenever the model has come in, they give a worst case scenario and a best case scenario. Generally, the reality is somewhere in the middle. I've never seen a model of the diseases that I've dealt with, which the worst case scenario actually came out. They always overshoot. So when you use numbers like a million, a million and a half, two million, that almost certainly is off the chart now, it's not impossible, but very, very unlikely. So it's difficult to present. I mean, looking at what we're seeing now, you know, I would say between 100 and 200,000 cases, but I don't want to be held to that because it's, it's, it's uh, excuse me, deaths. I mean, we're, we're going to have millions of cases, but I, I just don't think that we really need to make a projection when it's such a moving target that you could so easily be wrong. 
and mislead people. What we do know, Jake, is that we got a serious mm -hmm. problem in New York. We have a serious problem in New Orleans, and we're going to be developing serious problems in other areas. So although people like to model it, let's just look at the data of what we have and not worry about these worst case and best case scenarios. Well, let me ask you, so Dr. Fauci, we're about to hit the last day of the 15 days to flatten the curve. Everybody watching at home wants to know how long you think it's gonna last. What steps does the United States need to take right now in order to be able to see some light at the end of the tunnel? And when might that be? You know, Jake, what I wanna see is I wanna see a flattening and a turning down of the curve. So if somebody asks me a question, what about New York? Should we be pulling back on New York? Obviously not. New York is doing this. New Orleans is doing this. When we start to see a daily number of cases, instead of increasing and escalating, they start to flatten out, turn the corner, and then start coming down. When we see that, then you could start doing the modification of the intensity of your mitigation. As I've said before, it's true. The virus itself determines that timetable. You can try and influence that timetable by mitigating against the virus, but ultimately it's what the virus does. And when I start seeing this happen, then I'll come back on the show and tell you, you know, Jake, I think we're at that point now where we can start pulling back a little, but not right now in several of the places that I just mentioned. About um, loosening the social distancing guidelines in some parts of the country, uh, CNN's reporting that some federal health officials are, are preparing a recommendation where some parts of the country will be able to uh, open schools and open businesses. And, and yet I hear that, and then I hear what you're saying, and Dr. Burks, when you're saying that there are these hotspots that we know of, New Orleans, New York, and that we don't really have an idea of where other hotspots might be, you right. just agreed with what Speaker Pelosi said, because of because of the lag in testing, there could be hotspots in all sorts of cities that we don't know, right. and we're just not there yet. So what do you think about the recommendations that some parts of the country might be able right. to loosen the guidelines, given the fact that we, at least according to you, don't even know where these next hotspots will be? Great question, Jake. And that's the reason why, if you look at an area, any area, take one that has moderate degree of activity, you can't just empirically say, I'm gonna loosen restrictions there. You can do it, but you absolutely must have in place the capability of going there, testing, testing in an efficient way, not take a test, come back five days later and find out if you're infected. Testing, knowing in real time if a person is infected and then getting them out of circulation and contact tracing. Because if you release the restrictions before you have a good eyeball on what's going on there, you're gonna get in trouble. So I'm not against releasing the, the restrictions. I'm actually for it in an appropriate place, but I don't recommend it unless we have the tools in place in real time to do the things I just said. If we can do that, we can keep things contained without slipping into the need of having to mitigate the way they are in New York, in New Orleans, and other places now. So it's doable, but it's only mm -hmm. doable if you put the tools in place. Do we have those tools? Vice President Pence said that there had been more than 600,000 tests across the country, which is certainly an improvement from where we were a month ago, but there are 330 million Americans, um, 660,000 or 600, whatever the number is, 600,000 plus. Um, how? How many tests need to have been done, need to be done before you will feel comfortable knowing where the hotspots are so then some restrictions can be uh, loosened in, in the future? You know, Jake, I don't think it's the quantitative, like how many tests do you need? I mean, obviously you want to get tests out there that one can get a test easily in real time with a result right away. So right now, if you compare a couple of weeks ago to where we are right now, we have an amazingly larger number of tests than we had before. But what I wanna see, and I wanna be satisfied, is that those tests are being implemented on the ground where we need them. That's the connection I wanna make sure, not just tests out there,
but are the tests being able to be implemented? If we can do that, Jake, I think we could reasonably, with the safety of the American people in mind, pull back on some of the restrictions. But you got to have all the players and all the material in place. That's what we're trying to do. Right. But it doesn't sound like those tools are in place right now. You know, Jake, in some places they are and in some places they're not. We have to be honest and realistic because you go to a place and people say, well, I still can't get testing as quickly as I can. But that situation is being less and less common as the days and weeks go by, because the more we're hearing of people who maybe could not get tests before are getting them now, it still is not a perfect situation because I'm sure people will be calling up and saying, I needed to get a test and I couldn't get it. Hopefully that's much, much less frequently than we saw a week or two ago. Do you think you will be comfortable with the amount of testing being present so that restrictions can be lifted in some parts of the country? You know, I think it's gonna depend a lot, Jake, on the availability of those rapid tests that you can get really quickly, 15 minutes or so, where you'll know right away so that when you identify someone who's infected, that person doesn't go out into society for a few days, infect a bunch of people, and then you bring them back because the test is positive. When we get those tests out that you can do right away, rapid point of care and do it, then I think we're gonna be closer. You know, to put a time on it, Jake, I don't know, it's gonna be a matter of weeks. It's not gonna be tomorrow, and it's certainly not gonna be next week. It's gonna be a little bit more than that. And exactly when it'll be, I think relates to the question you asked me. When are we gonna get that material, those tests, and the PPEs and other things that people can utilize with that? When we get it out there, that's when we're gonna be able to do what you're talking about. But that, of course, what you're saying makes it very clear that and when the 15 days are up for the 15 days to flatten the curve campaign, and that, that will be over this early this week, you don't think that we're ready to, to lift guidelines yet? Well, you know, Jake, we're going we're gonna to obviously seriously discuss and consider that. My own opinion, looking at the way things are, I doubt if that would be the case. But, you know, we're a group, we're a task force, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about it. But obviously, what you see me describe, it's a little iffy there. So we'll take it as it comes. We'll look at it. And if we need to push the date forward, we will push the date forward. Uh, Governor Cuomo has been talking about needing uh, 30,000 uh, ventilators. Uh, they're not uh, using them right now, uh, but he says that, that his experts are telling him that he needs to prepare for that. Um, do you have any reason to doubt that, that 30,000 ventilators for New York is what his health officials are recommending? You know, there's a lot of different calculations. I mean, I, my experience, I tend to believe Governor Cuomo I mean, there are some that say there are, there are ventilators that are there in, in a certain place that's accessible. We just need to connect the dots to get them accessible. So there, there are two issues here. Are there ventilators there that you can use that you need better accessibility to? And if so, get them. If not, then give them to them. One way or the other, he needs the ventilators that he needs and hopefully we will get him the ventilators that he needs. They may be closer to him than is realized, but if they're not, we'll get him there. And if they are, we'll try to help him get access to the ones that are there. Bottom line, he's got to have the ventilators, period. Uh, last question for you, Dr. Fauci. I have to ask you about something that the president said at his press conference on Friday. Take a listen. When they're not appreciative to me, they're not appreciative to the Army Corps, they're not appreciative to FEMA, it's not right. I say, Mike, don't call the governor of Washington. You're wasting your time with him. Don't call the woman in Michigan. You know what I say? If they don't treat you right, I don't call. Dr. Fauci, can you assure the American people that whether or not they get the help they need from the federal government, it does not depend on whether their governors are appreciative enough of the federal help or flattering enough of the Trump administration? No, Jake, I think the reality, not the rhetoric, but the reality is that the people who need things will get what they need. There's the reality and the rhetoric. I think that, I mean, I know the spirit of the task force and when we talk about when people need things, it doesn't matter who they are. We try to get them what they need. All right, Dr. Uh, Fauci, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for all the work you're doing. We really appreciate it. And thanks for talking to us today. Good to be with you, Jake.